The Dolphins have had a busy offseason. From exercising Tua Tagovailoa's fifth-year option to trading for Jalen Ramsey, Miami has sculpted their roster quite nicely. However, with only four picks in the upcoming draft in April, the Dolphins will have to get creative to get the most out of the draft as possible, using Pro Football Focus's Mock Draft Simulator. Here are five trades that are possible for the Dolphins on draft night. 1. Dolphins trade into the tail end of the first round. In this trade, the Dolphins send over pick 52, a 2023 second round pick, a 2024 second round pick and DT Raekwon Davis for the Philadelphia Eagles 30th overall pick. With the 30th overall pick, the Dolphins would have their shot at a few positions of need, including tight end or interior offensive linemen. Available players could include T.E. Darnell Washington, T.E. Michael Mayer, G. Steve Avila, C. John Michael Schmitz or even a running back like Bijan Robinson or Jomer Gibbs, according to the Pro Football Hall of Fame, 46% of Hall of Famers were first-round picks, as opposed to the six other rounds, and the really old drafts that went over 20 rounds. There is possibly nothing more valuable than a first-round pick in the NFL and if you want to win in this league, you are going to need first-round picks, moving into the first round would not be cheap, but having a top 30 player instead of waiting until pick 52 would be enticing for the Dolphins. Who are clearly in win-now mode, as indicated by recent moves, including the Jalen Ramsey trade. The Miami Dolphins trade back into the later second round, with only four picks in the entire draft, the Dolphins could look at their first selection in the draft as a trade piece to acquire more draft capital on the weekend, enter the Arizona Cardinals, who have already picked 3rd overall and 34th, who are likely looking to be aggressive with a new general manager and head coach. A team with their franchise quarterback eating up a large chunk of their cap space, the Cardinals will want all the high draft picks they can possibly acquire. The Dolphins send their 52nd pick to Arizona in exchange for the 66th, 96th and 105th pick in the draft, at 66, the Dolphins should still be able to draft a solid prospect at a position of need, while gaining more draft capital at the same time. This would give the Dolphins two additional picks in a highly regarded draft class, something that can be invaluable for a team who wants to win in the near future. Prospects that could be available at 66 include tight end Sam Laporta, center Luke Whipler, edge rusher Andre Carter and running back Zach Charbonnet. Almost all the prospects mocked around pick 66 are all projected to be year one contributors and eventual starters, moving back 14 spots does seem less than ideal for a team in win-now mode, but gaining the additional draft capital in such a deep class is worth the drop back, in my opinion. If you lose out on 14 better players for an additional two picks, so be it. The Miami Dolphins acquired tight end Will Disley from the Seahawks for a sixth round pick, number 197 overall. Dot. Remember how we said the Jalen Ramsey trade left the tight end room completely barren? The Seattle Seahawks may have too many cooks in the kitchen in their tight end room, including Will Disley who's found himself behind Noah Fant on the depth chart after signing a three-year, $24 million contract with Seattle last season, the Seahawks, who likely just want his contract off the books with. Their abundance of tight ends could very easily consider Disley a cut candidate, but believe they could get some sort of trade value out of him. The sixth-year tight end out of the University of Washington has been very versatile for the Seahawks and has become a fan favorite. Considered a fantastic inline blocker, Will Disley, or Uncle Will to Seahawks fans, is often in a three-point stance in Seattle. However, he can catch the ball very well. Disley notched 34 catches for 349 yards in 15 games last season with Seattle, even while sharing targets with Noah Fant and missing some games to injury. Disley is a solid tight end that can do anything you ask him to, and enjoys doing it. If the Dolphins don't see much value in the sixth round and want to add on to their starving tight end room, this trade may just make sense for both parties. The Dolphins get their tight end depth and the Seahawks save some money and acquire an additional draft pick. The Miami Dolphins trade back to number 87 for a 2024 second round pick and additional 23 draft capital. Here, 
I have the Dolphins giving up pick 52 and a 2025 fifth round pick, via Denver, for a 2024 second round pick as well as picks 87 and 119 in 2023 with the Minnesota Vikings. The Dolphins are set to have both their first and second round picks next season, barring any more blockbuster trades. Obtaining another second rounder for next year's draft gives them three picks in the first two rounds in what is projected to be another strong draft class in 2024. Giving up on a high pick in this year's draft for several high picks in next year's may be the most logical and safest way of going about it this year. Moving back to the 87th pick would actually mean their first selection in the 2023 draft would be at the 84th pick, their native third rounder. If the Dolphins were feeling crazy, they could do what many teams do with picks so close together, Miami would have picks 84 and 87, they could trade one of them for even more draft capital in a draft that could crank out some real NFL talent across every round, it may seem redundant to keep trading back for more and more draft picks, but this draft class is deep. Theoretically, the Dolphins could draft a day one starter in the third or fourth round, rookies are getting better and better every year. Look at the 2022 draft class, there is a quality player in every single round. Miami Dolphins trade Christian Wilkins and a 2024 fifth round pick for pick number 19, I know, trading Christian Wilkins sounds like a ridiculous idea, but is it, Wilkins is entering the final year of his rookie contract and based on what defensive tackles in this new market are getting, he will want to be paid soon. And deservedly so. But with Tua's contract expiring coupled with the contracts of Tyreek Hill, Jalen Ramsey, and Bradley Chubb, can the Dolphins even afford Wilkins after this season, instead of having Wilkins walk and receive nothing in return after next season, the Dolphins should try to get something out of him. Perhaps one of the young, exciting, and cheap defensive linemen in the first round of the draft. Collegiate Kansi, Nolan Smith, and possibly even Jalen Carter, pending his legal issues, could be around for pick number 19. All of those guys would be hard to pass up as a replacement for Wilkins, the Dolphins may also decide to take an offensive lineman here, a first-round caliber player who could be a staple on the offensive line for years to come. Cornerstone players like Broderick Jones, Anton Harrison and even Paris Johnson could all be available here, on top of that, the Dolphins would keep the rest of their four draft picks and save lots of money next offseason. It is a high-risk, high-reward move, but the Dolphins seem to have no problem gambling on those.